بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Welcome back dear students Now I hope that you have uh, an, uh, a lot of time to practice the things that we talked about before We are going to move on of course in our book We are still in the first part which is to connect Now I gave you the idea of connecting Now, connecting the ideas, connecting uh, phrases together, uh, connecting structures. You know, there are different things that we can connect. Also, we connect skills together in our lessons. In our last lesson, we had the conversation part. Now, if you recall that we had the conversation, the conversation, we had the basic idea, which is deduction. Deduction here. Now we're going to practice, and I did ask you to practice, so practice makes perfect. I have here something that I like to call all-in-one, which means that I put a lot of phrases or ideas together to practice them at the same time. Now a tip for you, connect with something related to you. If you want to remember an idea or a phrase, always relate to something that you are familiar with. While listening, put in mind the tone while speaking and stress of words. So if you noticed me in the last lesson when I was talking about detection, when I said that the operation can't have been done or she must be happy. Now, if you can see that my voice, it raises and sometimes it goes lower based on the idea that I have here. So this is what we call here intonation. Now we are going to see um, or you are going to actually listen to me I want you to listen and you can also read but listen to the way that I stress my voice while I'm reading and just try to put in mind that I'm using a lot of phrases using deduction know what a day I won an international contest at school and got a new computer as a gift and was excited to start it. But my friends invited me to celebrate my win, so I had to go first. When I went there to meet them after school, I was 15 minutes late and they didn't seem to be anywhere around. They must have left, I said to myself, but that can't be true. They must be playing some kind of prank. Their phones were off and I went back home angry. When I tried to open the computer, it didn't work. It must be broken, my sister said. So we went to look for my father for help. We couldn't find him too. His car was in the garage, so he can't have left the house. He must be somewhere, I told my sister, and we went back to the garden where we found my cousin's bicycle, but she wasn't around. That's strange. Where did she go? My sister said. She must be looking around for us in another place, I replied, when I realized something strange. Everybody is disappearing, I told her confused. Sara, my best friend, didn't show up at school either. She must have overslept, I said to the teacher, but I was worried because she didn't text me. This can't be normal. There's something going on. I was telling my sister about everything and was walking with her to the outdoor guest room. My sister opened the door and suddenly a lot of balloons flew out and all my family and friends were shouting, we are proud of you. Everyone was there. They planned a surprise party that must have taken a lot of time. Everything was beautiful and perfect. So you can see that there is uh, this short story here. I wrote the story and applied a lot of phrases that have deduction within these stories. And if you noticed, also I used different examples that we discussed about, like the bicycle. So the most important part here is to relate your ideas and try to connect between what we are learning and your own life. Now we are going to move on. 
we have the conversation. I want to turn to something else here, which is speaking. Now, some of you may ask, what is the difference? Now, in conversation, we are speaking. So how can we have two lessons? We have a conversation lesson, which we took, and now we are going to take a different lesson, which is about speaking. So what's the difference? Now, there's a difference between talking, speaking, and conversation is, as you can see here in this graph, we have here speaking. Now, speaking here, it can be either talking or speaking. Now, still, we don't have a very clear idea what is happening. If we focus on talking, we can say when we are talking that we are having a conversation. So now you know that conversation is something that is happening w between two people when they talk together. Speaking on the phone. Now I can say that this person is having a conversation or he is speaking on the phone. And we have here speaking can be used when someone is talking in general places. He is speaking to uh, a crowd or to the public, or we can say that he is making a speech. Now, discussing talking uh, about different some things. Now, we have here, as we mentioned, uh, talking, speaking, and conversation. So, we have here, as we said, that when we are talking, we can have some kind of conversation or discussion. One can do it. It is a drill, which is speaking here, of course. We have here, it may be formal. And we have here, as I mentioned before, speech is the noun. So speak is the verb, speech is the noun. It can be formal, it can be informal. And we have here the word conversation, which is, as we know, between two or more than two. And it can be spontaneous and usually informal. So now you know that there is a different, or sorry, a difference between the three words we have here. Basically, you are going to uh, concentrate between the difference between uh, conversation and speech or speaking. Now, just to relate, we have here something new. Now you can read with me. Incidents happen every day. We always tell stories about things that have happened to us. Now, when I tell you something, I am speaking, but I'm not having a conversation. I am telling you now what is happening to me. Now, one of the incidents that I can mention here, if you can see that there is a kind of ATM here. What is she doing? We can see that, of course, she is withdrawing her money. So what is the idea? Some of the uh, words or the um, uh, things that can come in mind when you are uh, or when you listen to the word ATM or see an ATM is, of course, money. And we have your cards. Now, what's the point? Have you ever been in a situation related to the ATM or we have here these different words? Now, I just want you to put in mind what we have here. We had the idea or the story. Now, we know that we are talking about uh, speaking now. We know that there is some kind of situation that we are going to deal with. And we are going to go back to the table that I showed you in the previous lesson. Now you can see that the table here is in page number five in your book. If you open your book with me now, we can just read together what are the different features that are mentioned. Now we have the first feature. We have here pauses and fillers. False starts and restarts. Complete sentences. Incomplete sentences. Reordering. Rewording. Self-correction. Connectors. Punctuation. And intonation. Now these are the features. And we have here, if you can see on the other two columns, we have here the first part, which is spoken text and written text. So which means that we have here these features, we are going to relate them to either spoken or written text. 
So we are going to join what we have here. But first, we're going to read our objectives. Our objectives of the day are to compare between written and spoken texts. Identify features from different types of texts. Maximize opportunities for language practice. Now let's compare. I'm going to move on. We are going to go back to the idea of the ATM. And you are going to just listen one time and read in another time a short story that we have here which is related to the ATM that we had before and the idea of money and cards. So what do we have? Now you do have your speaking table on page number five, just to remind you. We're going to start with the table. Now we have here, you are going to listen and compare the written text with the spoken account of an incident. Now an incident is a kind of story Tick the features that you identify in each or both. Now, I left for you the table just to read and try to understand by yourself what are the things that we have in the table and try to just see what you understand from the features and tick, are they spoken or written? And we will do them again at the end of the lesson. Now, before we start, let's check out some words just to make you sure that, that you are on the same path with me. Of any of these words familiar? Now these words, they are going to pass by you. For example, delight. We have another word. Withdrawal. Securely. No avail. Rush back. Confirmation. Request. Upset. Embarrassed. Report, incident, fortunately, security, feature, foolish, and we're going to start. So here, some of these words you can just recall. Do you know their meanings? Some of them are easy. Like you know, the word secure, or you can relate it to security. Uh, foolish, we have withdrawal. We are going to now connect all the ideas that we have. We have the basic idea. We are now know that we are going to listen and read to a story. You are going to just tick with me. What are the features that you understand within the table? So we have here the spoken text. Now you are going to listen to me while I'm reading the text and try to tick what are the things that you noticed. Are they spoken or did you read them? Has it happened to you or someone you know? About a week ago, I went to check my bank account for the upteenth time, hoping that I'd find some cash I placed my card in the machine, keyed my password, and to my great delight, there was the money in my account. So I pressed withdrawal, took my card out of the machine, as I was supposed to, and happily walked away. I must have taken about 10 steps or so when I thought of checking to make sure that I'd put the money away securely. I searched my small bag and my pockets to no avail. I immediately turned and rushed back to the ATM. As I had feared, there was no cash in the slot. 
I then checked my account to only get a confirmation that the amount I had requested had in fact been withdrawn. I was really upset and embarrassed. I called the bank and reported the incident. They promised to check the following day. Fortunately, the machine had a security feature which pulled back cash that was not collected within 15 or 20 seconds. I was feeling really foolish to have done such a thing, but then I was told that it happens all the time. Would you believe it? Now here, this is a story that you can sometimes relate to. Now what did you notice? We're going to go back to the table that we have here. Now I spoke first, or you listened to me, which means that we have a spoken text. Now just to put in mind, were there pauses and fillers? Did I stop a little bit between the sentences? Did I pause? False restarts, false starts and restarts. Now it is normal and it is very human that sometimes when we are saying a sentence or you sometimes you can just make a small mistake within speaking and you just go back and repeat the sentence. Does it happen or not? Complete sentences or incomplete sentences. Do we all always give complete? Can they be incomplete sometimes? Reordering, rewording. Now, reorder means to just give a sentence again in another order or to just change the order of the words. Self-correction. Do you sometimes correct yourself while you're speaking? Connectors. Is there some kind of connecting between the sentences? Punctuation, full stops, commas. And we have your intonation, which means the rising and the falling of the voice. So just to pass by and here, I gave you the idea just to check and see, did you understand each one of them? And how about when I spoke and I told you the story, what did you notice? We can say that, yes, there were pauses and fillers. Yes, there were false starts and restarts. If you can notice sometimes when I'm talking, that I just go back and give my sentence again. Yes, there were, of course, complete sentences, and yes, there were incomplete sentences. Do we reorder? Do we reword? Self-correct, do you correct yourself sometimes? Do you use connectors in your sentences? How about punctuation? Do you say, uh, when you finish a sentence, full stop? or a comma, or exclamation mark, or question mark? Do we say them while we're speaking? So we have here, this one is going to be passed. And the intonation, as we said, the falling and rising of your voice, the stress when you're speaking. So I think the end, yes. So if you have all of the ticks or the marks, as I did here, you're good. Now we have the other part, which is the written text. The written text, we are going to pass by the same story, but this time I'm going to give you a chance just to read and you're going to see, did you apply the same things here or not, the same features? So this time it is written, you are going to read. I have here just a small timer for you, just to give you a chance to read and see, did you apply the feature or not? Moving on. You have your time. Make sure that you pass by all the features. Rewording, recorrecting, rephrasing, uh, the intonation, the punctuation. Make sure that you pass by all of them. Moving on.
Did you notice that there are any kinds of pauses or stops when you are reading? Last part. Put in mind here the different punctuation marks that we have. Have you self-corrected yourself while reading? And we're done. Now going back to our table here. Now, were there pauses and fillers? Were there false starts or restarts? Were there complete sentences, incomplete sentences, and so on? So we're going to see what are the basic features that we have here in written text. We can say, yes, there are complete sentences. And yes, we have here connectors, they are used. And of course, we have here punctuation can be seen, not like or unlike the uh, spoken text, which we cannot uh, see, but we can hear. Now it is your turn. You are going to also work in pairs. Think about an incident you heard or read about or something that you happened to know or someone you know and you're going to make notes. What is the idea of the notes here? Now you are going to also speak in the same way. You are going to uh, differentiate between spoken and written text. What are you going to do? You are, you might, it might be, uh, or it might help you to write the actions or the verbs in the order they happened and then add people, objects, and places. Lastly, don't forget to also convey the manner in which things which happened Use your voice, exclamations, adjectives, and adverbs. So here, it may be easier just to look in your book. You can find that there is this table. In this table, we can have, or we can see that there is the event or time, people, actions, nouns or objects, places, feelings, and condition. So you can use this table just to uh, we have here order your uh, or reorder the sentences that we have here. You can just put your notes to help you uh, prepare your spoken text or your written one. Now we have here, for example, these words that we passed by within the incident or the story that we read or spoke or I, you listened to me actually. Now we have here, you can see that we have in the first part we have here uh, a week ago is an event or a time. Me, as people. Uh, actions, we have here, for example, an incident, withdrawal, rush back, request, report. Nouns or objects, we can say that we have here confirmation and security feature. We have feelings. Of course, there is no place mentioned. So feelings, there is delight upset, embarrassed, and foolish. Condition, we can say securely and fortunately. So you can see that it's not about writing every single word that you speak, but it's just to help you have your notes ready. So we have here, use your notes and tell your partner or your class about your incident. This is going to be your homework that you're going to prepare for your next lesson, inshallah. Now, at the very end, we finished uh, our first part, which is connect. Our outline of the day is, of course, we had the listen and discuss, listening to four paragraphs, which are topics from the book. We have here pair work, which was about expressing opinion, agreement, and point of view. We have conversation, which is expressing about, with detection, sorry, phrases using models. And you can see that I corrected myself here. And we have the last part, speaking, which is to compare between spoken and written text, uh, scripts. So uh, we have here simple things that we have applied together, and you are going to apply as well. And now, as I uh, said before, I'm going to remind you to use and apply these different uh, 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 skills, or we have here the different things that we learned in uh, class and at home as well. 
So till the next lesson, prepare and have a nice day.